Frank, when I read this reporting um, in The New York Times about the Proud Boys being on the radar of law enforcement, but never really um, taken seriously, I thought of all the excuses that um, everyone in Trump's orbit had when Robert Mueller scrutinized them for potential coordination and conspiracy with Russia. It was always they couldn't coordinate with headquarters. How'd they coordinate with the Russian government? This is, again, um, the incompetence defense, it sounds. We really seem to have a collective inability to accurately assess a threat when it looks like us, when it is us, and when it's staring us right in the face. And so what, what we're seeing more and more is that there are blind spots in law enforcement's ability to see the domestic threat. Some of them are very, very righteous, valid, legal concerns that have to be wrestled with as we move forward and try to get out in front of the domestic threat. We need to have a national discussion and quickly about what we're comfortable with law enforcement monitoring online and, and whether you know we cross a line from simply policing ideology, which nobody wants, to actually policing the, the path to a flashpoint of violence. But the other bigger issue, Nicole, is look, we bought them hook, line and sinker when they told us we're not violent. We're just about separating the races, not not hurting each other. We, we're about white nationalism and not losing our culture. People seem to buy into that, despite the fact that there had been violent outbreaks and beatings on the street. No one paid attention. I need you to say more about blind spots for people that look like us, because it sounds like you're talking about a couple things, and I, I just want to pull them out of you. Um, one, is it race? And two, is it that the Proud Boys were almost wannabe law enforcement forces? Well, I think I think we're now getting into to layers of nuance, which is, hey, let's be real. Some some of these groups, Oath Keepers in particular, are populated with active and retired law enforcement and military. We know that at least 35 police departments have active internal affairs investigations of whether their officers were at the Capitol um, during the insurrection. So, you know, it is us means literally the threat could be the law enforcement folks and the military stuff, folks who have to examine the threat. The other is just a reality that I, I am certain that if you switch to the religion and the mission on, on those folks on January 6th from Christianity to radical, violent Islam and violent jihad as a mission, then you're going to see the FBI and law enforcement way out in front of this with informants, undercover agents, court ordered wiretaps, and probably even able to prevent it before it even happened. And we know that's true. I mean, after 9-11, everything that our government did and everything we turned to the FBI to do um, was was built around that um, that theory and that goal. Yumisha, I want to ask you about the two arrests today. Um, these are from this um, intense investigation into how Officer Sicknick died. Um, Julian uh, Cater, 32, of Pennsylvania, and George Tenios, 39, of West Virginia, were taken into custody Sunday, accused of using bear spray. Officer Sicknick died a day after the riots, and authorities suspect he may have inhaled a spray-type irritant. Um, it seems that a lot of the heat in the investigation is, is around the events leading up to his death. But every indication is that the investigation is still very much intensifying. That's right. These arrests are just part of a investigation that is clearly growing and it will be encompassing more and more people. Um, it's been very clear from my reporting and from the hearings that we, we that have been happening on Capitol Hill that law enforcement is just getting started when it comes to identifying all of these people, identifying who's most to blame, identifying who are the people who are the most aggressive. Um, this officer died after um, coming back from, from the Capitol. So I think there's going to be some real questions about how much um, these two men and others might be able to be charged in his death or whether or not this is going to be something that's going to be um, really debated about how much they could have influenced him, given the fact that he died hours later. But I think that there are people, of course, who are going to want to see real accountability because this officer died. Other people 
passed away. I also want to get back to one thing that I think Frank was saying, because I think it, get, it gets to this investigation. And now it, it really the, the feeling that it, it's an investigation that's trying to catch up because there was time wasted in the, in the minds of some critics. Let's remember, he just said, you know, if you change the, the, the religion of this, as someone who's covered Black Lives Matter and a lot of Black Lives Matter protests, I can tell you I've talked to a lot of um, peaceful protesters who have been visited by the FBI, who feel like they were targeted by the FBI, who feel like the FBI and law enforcement were very, very interested and on top of who Black Lives Matter was and who their members were and what they were doing. And I think there's a real question about the double standard that we're living in this country, whether or not this group being a group of white men, whether or not that they were treated differently than other people, including, of course, um, violent jihadists, but also regular everyday black Americans in this country who were asking for police accountability. So I think there's a big question as this investigation goes on, how we treated Americans who were trying to have change versus Americans who are now part of the what, what the FBI director says is the biggest threat to, to our security, which is domestically, that is, um, and that is white supremacist in this country. Well, Claire, Yamish is being um, diplomatic and elegant about it. The questions have been answered by none other than Ron Johnson, who said the only reason he felt safe on 1-6 during the insurrection is because they were white people who loved their country. They were Black Lives Matter. Whoa! He would have been scared. You know, it's, it's interesting. It feels like sometimes that this hour that I am so enjoy spending with you on Mondays is the Ron Johnson show. You know, I mean, what is it with this guy? <laughs> Not by I our mean, design. <laughs> I know. I mean, the Ron and Non Johnson, it, you know, he's like a gift that keeps on giving on so many different fronts. Yeah, he said the part out loud. Um, he said that right. these people were patriots uh, because they looked like him. And that if they'd been Black Lives Matter, he would have been afraid. Um, and, you know, and, and, and Yamish is right. Uh, there has been all kinds of intelligence gathering throughout our history. And Frank knows this. Mm -hmm. um, the FBI has had some very dark chapters gathering intelligence against civil rights leaders when we were struggling for our first go at racial equality in this country back in the 60s. So um, it is really important that the fact that the president refused to to criticize this group and said, stand back and stand by. There is a direct line from the president of the United States saying that on the debate stage as he campaigned for a second term in the high for the highest office in the land and the reaction of law enforcement. Um, yes. Is it harder to go after domestic terrorists because of all the rules that they must abide by in terms of our constitutional rights as American citizens? Yes, it's harder. But human intelligence is human intelligence. Undercover operatives are undercover operatives. Knock and talk yeah. applies to people in trailer parks in Arkansas or West Virginia or Missouri, just as it applies to people who live in urban areas that are protesting peacefully to try try to find racial equality. So we've got to make sure that the standard is the same for both. And we're struggling with that one. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.